Hey everybody, here we are today. Today we are finishing up properties of water. Okay, so yesterday we learned about three properties of water. I'm going to start today with those exact same three. I'm just going to quickly review them. Not going to get too in depth with them. And then I'm going to finish with um, the last couple of properties of water. So we're not going to spend too much time today. It's going to be a little bit shorter of a lesson, but I want to make sure that we get everything that we need to get covered done. So without further ado, let me uh, boogie on down to the corner and kind of go over some of the stuff. All right, here we are. Let's rock and roll. Cohesion. Remember yesterday we talked about cohesion, co referring to cooperate. Those two water molecules are just not just two, but many water molecules sticking together with other water molecules. So it's really important for the water molecules to stick to water molecules. That is cohesion. That leads to a property called surface tension. So when we talk about water sticking to each other and supporting weight on top of it, that is cohesion. Adhesion. Adhesion is when water sticks to non-water molecules. So when water sticks to non-water molecules, now we have adhesion. So again, what raindrops sticking to the leaves of a plant, water inside a water bottle or on your windshield of your car, all those are different examples of adhesion. Adhesion, cohesion work together to form this property called capillarity, which will allow water to defy gravity and work its way up. And why is that incredibly important? It's going to be incredibly important because of the root systems of plants. Remember, plants have a root system and then they have what we call a vascular, uh, they have vascular tissue and a vascular system to pull the water in from their roots and send it all the way up to their leaves. So it's incredibly important and incredibly amazing that water has the ability or plants have the ability to do this without expending energy. The big thing to understand is plants don't expend energy going through capillarity or capillary action. Um, it's all just moving water up through these specialized cells. Now, let's get into some new stuff. First new property that we want to talk about today is something called specific heat. Specific heat is the um, resistance to change in temperature. And that's important because what it's saying is that proportionally water requires a lot of energy in order to change its temperature. Um, now, why is that important? Think about this hot summer day early the end of the school year june you know let's say like june 20th june 15th something like that 90 some degrees outside the sun is at almost like right overhead it is baking us how warm is the ocean how is the ocean temperature it's actually quite cold but now right now if i go outside 70 degrees sun's at a really low angle but if i go to the ocean right now and i go in the water the water's a lot warmer than june now, why is the water warmer right now than it is in June? What actually is happening is it takes a lot of energy to heat up the ocean. So what's happening is all summer, the ocean is warming up. So the later in the summer you go, like if you go to the ocean in like mid to late August, it's usually at its warmest, right? But as you keep uh, putting energy in, it's going to get warmer and warmer and warmer. Whereas then what's going to happen is that doesn't cool down as fast either. So in September, it's still semi-warm. It's decently warm water. And then eventually it cools down all winter, it continues to cool down all winter, probably reaching its peak coldness, you know, late, late February, early March. And then eventually it starts to warm up again. And it kind of goes a little bit of a lag time compared to the seasons because the sun, it needs energy to cause that to change. So it takes, you know, a lot of energy coming in from the sun all through the summer months to eventually warm that ocean up. Same thing happens with lakes. If you ever had to boil a pot of water on your stove, you know that it takes a long while to get it boiling, depending on the uh, amount of energy from the burners heating up that water. So that's why the um, bodies of water are really resistant to change. So, it, But the thing is, we use the idea of specific heat because it does take so much energy, it can absorb so much energy before it changes its temperature. This is gonna become really important when we talk about the next property, which is the heat of vaporization. Heat of vaporization is how much energy it requires to evaporate water. Now think about this, that we thought, no, it can absorb a lot of energy before it changes. Now what's going to happen is it's going to release that energy when you cool off, when you sweat. So by sweating, what's going to happen is your body is taking water from inside of it. It is moving it out through your sweat pores, your sweat glands, different things like that. And then what is going to happen is that it's going to then evaporate off your body and remove that energy from your body. So it will actually cool you down in that process. 
So it's going to go through its phase change going from a liquid to a gaseous state. But in doing so, it's going to remove heat energy from your body. And this helps you to maintain that internal environment. And what is that called when you maintain your internal environment? Homeostasis. So hopefully we're remembering these term this terminology. Hopefully these things aren't kind of crazy new to you. But the idea of the reason why you sweat is to regulate your body temperature. And it's because of a specialized property of water, which has a lot of requires a lot of energy to go through those phase changes. Something that hopefully you've learned, the idea of solvents and solutes. We'll probably go over them in a little bit. But universal solvent is a term we apply to water. Uh, and what happens when we refer to it as the universal solvent, it's because water will dissolve many, many different substances. So what it does is it can separate ions. So like uh, salt in water, salt will get dissolved by the water, salt being the solute, water being the solvent. And what it will do is it will break that into different ions and then allow those ions to react with other particles. Again, we talk about why water is important for biological reactions. When it dissolves things, it helps to break them apart and move them to um, other little ionized states. So it's incredibly important. And the things that water cannot dissolve, like how many of you ever climbed a pine tree in your life? You get pine sap on your hands. Water doesn't really dissolve it that well. That's because pine sap is nonpolar. So remember we talked about it at the beginning, water is a polar molecule, it has a positive end and a negative end. So it allows it to dissolve a lot of different substances, but non-polar things like waxes and fats and greases and sap, um, they won't really dissolve well in water. But if you use other things like different other solvents, like maybe nail polish remover or gasoline or something like that, that will dissolve those different substances. So that is a non-polar substance you're using. Like gasoline is a non-polar substance, which will dissolve those different other substances. So kind of interesting, but we refer to water as the universal solvent, universal referring to, it can be applied to many different scenarios to do the dissolving. And the last thing we want to talk about is the idea of density. Water is incredibly unique in that its solid is less dense than its liquid phase. Very, very few compounds on the planet are like this, but the solid is less dense. That's why ice will float. So when ice floats, especially in like winter environments, the ice forms at the top of the water on like a lake or something like that. It'll actually kind of, depending on how thick it gets, form kind of like a blanket and insulates the water underneath. So water will freeze from the top down but that's why lakes and ponds usually never freeze all the way solid, right? They're never gonna freeze all the way down because it's insulating, so it's trapping a lot of heat energy deeper in the water. It's not like the water's getting warmer, but it's staying at a certain temperature and it's kind of protected from being frozen. And that's why a lot of organisms can survive in the water late into the winters and stuff like that without dying off from being frozen. And with that, I conclude all of our different properties of water. Hopefully you guys understand this. Tomorrow you got a little activity where you are going to be kind of demonstrating and showing us the proficiency of the different properties of water. So I look forward to seeing how you do with that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know you can always drop into an office hour between 1030 and 11 o'clock, or you can always shoot me an email uh, or Mrs. Shinar an email. We'll make sure we get back to you. All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you so much.